In part one of our video on looking at the efficiency and suitability of these homes workwear heated gloves that are sold by Costco's online site in Canada but as of uh, the end of November not at the US Costco site for $99 Canadian which is a pretty good deal compared to the competition but what constitutes a good deal I suppose depends on whether your expectations are keeping your hands warm by using a battery pack or not and as we found in part one these didn't really do that and since then we've had a bit colder weather and in fact I have confirmed that they seem to heat up when they're sitting in the back of your car before you get to the trailhead and you put on a nice warm pair of gloves but as soon as you're outside and using them you almost don't know that there's any heat assistance at all to your fingers so we already expected that given the fact that you're getting around um, I can't remember how many watts it was uh, but that I think you really want 15 or 20 watts of power in order to keep your fingers warm and I believe that what we were getting with these was uh, lower than that so what I did was uh, went off and built another battery pack and here you can see what I ended up with it's got three 18650 cells and they're in series so that means that uh, it's nominally a 10.8 volt battery pack when fully charged it's around 12 something volts uh, because a fully charged lithium ion battery is 4.2 and it's normally rated at its nominal capacity of 3.6 so that's why you might see some confusion and I have noted that there is a seller of heated work gloves that's actually not far from where we're located here in Alberta that lists 12 and 16 volt battery packs for essentially the same type of glove and I haven't really tested or accessed their equipment but I would be willing to bet that he's calling uh, his 12 volt battery pack uh, 12 volt battery pack because it's 12 volts when fully charged but in fact by accepted industry practice it would be a 10.8 battery pack a 12 point battery a 12 volt battery pack would have four 18650 cells in it and um, therefore but I would have to actually get their pack and test it to see because it's lithium ion phosphate pack this pack is made from lithium ion cobalt batteries they're Panasonic 18650B batteries and they're the unprotected because as you'll see in a later segment where I go over in more detail building this pack uh, how it's protected and managed by a battery management system so the first thing we're going to do is look at how much we are drawing in terms of current from this glove with the newer battery pack and just as a refresher I believe we saw something like 1.4 to 1.5 amps were being drawn by the 7.4 volt battery packs that are come with the glove and um, then it started to drop down from there. So I've got my clamp meter attached to one side of the power line from the battery to the glove and the glove is shut off. When I turn the glove on you're going to see the amp draw on this display either displayed as a negative or a positive draw which doesn't really matter as long as we know what it is. So I'm going to turn the glove on now on the highest power setting which is red and we're seeing now that the glove is drawing uh, two amps and if you recall from uh, part one we were getting 1.4 so now it is indicating that we are getting a higher watt draw for 25 watts uh, which is significantly higher than what we were getting before which was what nominally 12 or something so we've pretty much doubled our uh, power so with the new 10.8 volt 
lithium ion battery pack that I've just finished building installed. We are going to fire up this same glove with that temperature sensor in the same spot and see how it does as opposed to this other battery pack which is the stock pack that comes with the gloves. And as you recall in part one we started the test without ice on the glove to see what the maximum temperature was and uh, we did that on the bench where it's presently about 21 centigrade in uh, the bench area here. We'll just wait now and see how that goes and we'll speed things up. Mitts went off about five or six minutes ago. I was busy making bread so I missed it and as you can see now the temperature has been dropping. This one is in between the ice and the outside surface of the glove. This one is still inside. So I think we can conclude that we were getting a minimum of 60-65 on the high power setting for about the same two hour period as we did with the original battery pack. For now I'm going to call it we get the same amount of time out of the battery but we're probably getting double the heat output. So we've seen we get about twice as much heat for about the same amount of time and that means that we've got more energy and as we know from Einstein that taught us there's no free lunch and as Elon Musk will tell you if you want energy you're gonna pay for it in terms of uh, weight to volume trade-off and so that's just as easily illustrated here whether we've got a Tesla on the bench which I'll be doing next I'm just still tearing it apart in my garage as opposed to this so let's first of all look at the trade-off in terms of weight we know we're going to be carrying more weight in order to get more energy and so how much more let's bring in she who must be obeyed's cooking scale um, I had to wait for her to go to bed in order for me to steal this scale so I hope you appreciate the lengths I go to to do this 86 grams and let me check see if you can see that I guess you can that is the 7.4 bolt pack the one I just built 164 grams how about that so basically in order to get double the heat we've doubled the weight it's not a nice linear relationship on that and then the next part will be let's look at the thickness and see where we are on that and so this pack is approximately 25 millimeters thick and this pack is about 16 17 millimeters thick but then now if you have no interest in how to construct the battery pack what you need to come up with and uh, those other sort of uh, fine-tuning details that if you want to proceed with these gloves that we will do here are some of the materials that you're going to need to assemble in order to put together a battery pack.
looks to me uh, like these are going to be too hot to keep on at the high setting which is uh, the red and so you're probably going to go down at least to medium and when you do that you are probably going to get at least three hours out of these guys and you can even go to the green and who knows what you'll get out of that I haven't really tested it what five six hours perhaps but that's still not a full day and what if you are a little more ambitious and you are out for a full day probably when you're getting tired that's when you least want to have cold hands so what are your options then well as you may have guessed there's more to come and that will probably be something we'll look at in part three I've already done some preliminary testing of course obviously you could have another battery pack in fact if you've made up one of these you're still going to have these not the greatest but they're better than nothing that'll give you another two hours so what have you got then on the high heat if it's like minus 20 C don't know what that is in F it's pretty cold though um, and you run out you're like <clears throat> what do I do now well part three that's where we're going to cover this concept the advantage and the good thing about these gloves and I don't think they actually planned it this way is the blood flowing through here and we've covered this in the previous video this is where it gets warmed and it heads up into your fingers so if you warm the proximal surface of your wrist right here you've got some arterial flow that reaches up into your fingers so if you warm that blood it follows that your fingers are going to stay warmer not as warm as heating them directly uh, and proximally here through the fingers but it definitely does help now the size of this pocket doesn't allow unlimited insertion of a liquid fuel hand warmer but as it turns out these red star hand warmers work almost perfectly in there as you can see here it fits in and because of the vents up in the top it can continue burning and you can actually control the burn with the zipper a little bit and so that will also stop it from popping out when I left it fully open and you're hiking like this I noticed it could have a tendency to fall out so we're going to look at all that as being a another option in order to optimize the use of these gloves and we'll probably just do that in part three when the weather gets colder